Okay, so good morning. Uh, thank you again for everybody that's here. Uh, we appreciate everyone, uh, everyone that can uh, open uh, your your camera so we can interact more, at least uh, for for this uh, initial conversation. And maybe Zita or Leonardo are going to take a picture for you so you can you can uh, appear very very nicely in the stream. So we are very happy here to start the, our our sessions. Uh, one more session of our innovation talks. Uh, the idea here is the focus on SAF and, and, and discuss about innovative alternative fuels for aviation in Brazil and in the world. So I appreciate a lot everybody and thank a lot everybody that uh, participated in the organization and the ones that are going to participate in this, in this meeting. Uh, we are going to have some very, very uh, uh, nice discussions that will be handled by our, our uh, participants that were invited and, and, and accepted to, to share with us. Uh, but before we start with our uh, uh, first the discussion and the keynote uh, speech, I would like to ask uh, Felipe Casapo, the president of Enrich Inlac Association, to give you some words, uh, welcome words, and some words on uh, Enrich Inlac Association. Felipe, please. Thank you. Well, on my side, good morning. If you are in Latin America, buenos dias, bon dia. Good afternoon. If you are in Europe. It's a wonderful pleasure to have you here today to discuss one of the major topics we have to discuss as a common unified global institution that wants to foster innovation, research and development. As all of you guys know, one of the major challenge of the 21st century is to mitigate, to avoid, to revert global warming. And in order to do so, we need a lot of research, we need a lot of innovation, because we do need to disrupt the energy models that were designed in the 20th century. So that's the reason why we have created these innovation talks, in order to have the opportunity of meeting experts from Europe, from Latin America, and debate what really matters. So today we'll have a wonderful talk, and we will learn a lot about alternative fuels, and I would like on my side to thank so much our speaker for giving us the opportunity of learning with them. So thank you so much, Jürgen Kern from DLR, the Aerospace Agency of Germany. Thank you so much also to Carlos Hilario da Silva, who is the head of zero emission at Embraer Brazil, one of the largest airplane company in the world. Thank you also to Akim Skat, the head of Department of Sustainable Synthesis of Products, Hydrogen and Technology from the Fraunhofer for Solar Energy Systems in Germany. Thank you so much also to Amanda Duarte, Goji and Livia Nunes Cavalcanti, who are from the URFN University in Brazil, and Fabio Correa, who is a researcher at our Renewable Energy Institute of Senai. So this is what Enrich is about. Enrich is about uh, accelerating, simplifying, and uh, making more pragmatic the relationships between Europe and Latin America so that we can learn one from the other, so that we can create innovation project, research project, and we can address the big challenges of the 21st century, such as global warming, sustainable uh, urbanization, bioeconomy, social innovation, uh, the topics that do really matter. If you want to know more about Enrich in LAC, the European Network of Research Center Innovation Hubs in Latin America and the Caribbean, please go and check the Enrich in LAC website. Uh, we are an institution that were created by the European Union, and we are an official institution here legally constituted in Latin America, and we'll be very glad to be helpful and to uh, make the bridge between researchers, startups, companies, investors, uh, between Europe and Latin America, so that we can do what really matters, which is to learn one from the other, to practice research and development, to put new products in the market that are more sustainable, more focused on what we need in the 21st century. We match make a lot between uh, demands and offers for research development and innovation, we also help companies, startups, investors to set up financement, uh, financing solutions for innovation. 
and we are also an institution that is very focused on uh, uh, developing knowledge and transferring knowledge on how to make international innovation projects. So we had a lot of uh, a lot of uh, initiative in the sense of developing leadership and instruction and uh, capacitation for international innovation. So that's it on my side. I'm not going to take so much time. I will let you hand over back to Marco Quirino so that we can get started with the, the speeches today. Thank you so much. Thank you, Filippi. Uh, thank you again for the participation. I am uh, the executive director of uh, Enriching Luck Association. So it's a pleasure for me to be here and it's a pleasure to, to have Filippi, the president of the board, so, so and all of you. Uh, just additional comment. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Dr. Akin Shad is not going to be able to join us. On the other hand, we had a very good news uh, brought by Fabiola Correa, which is uh, Daniel from his uh, research group is joining us today too. So we, we have a very good, let's say, um, news re related to Daniel that's going to present us some information and representing also uh, the Easy Senai Renewable Energy Institute of Brazil. So uh, I think that we could go ahead and the idea is to invite our keynote speak, uh, Dr. Jürgen Kern, He's the project manager at DLR, DLR Institute of Networked Energy from Germany. And it's a pleasure to have you here. And I'll give you the, 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 the words uh, to, to, to share with us your presentation. So we already see it in the screen. So Dr. Jürgen, please go ahead. Thank you very much. Uh, bom dia e muito obrigado. Thank you very much, Marco and Felipe, for these very nice introductions and the opportunity to to talk to you in the innovation talk. Uh, I will present some of the activities um, in the field of sustainable aviation fuels um, all over the world, what we have done uh, in Germany, in Europe, but also from a project we have conducted together with a lot of stakeholders in Brazil in the last five years. So this project was started, as you see on the top, uh, together with uh, the MCTI, with uh, Ministerio de Ciencia, Tecnologia e Inovação, Eduardo Soriano, well-known director of this ministry, uh, was, was our main partner. And it was also enabled by our German Ministry for Economic Affairs and Climate Actions together with the GIZ. So today I will... No, it works. I will talk about innovation, innovative alternative fuels for aviation in Brazil. Um, my name is Jürgen Kern and I will represent the German Aerospace Center. So just to set the scene, I would uh, like to give three main impulses. Uh, the first one is um, global change. Climate change is a global challenge. Uh, we can only find global solutions. So of course we are working on national solutions and regional one but it has to be solved globally. Second is aviation is at crossroad. So we need radical changes. So we cannot continue in the way we have done before. So there have to be some radical changes. And the third one, international cooperation is the key. And our German Brazilian cooperation is an outstanding reference for this. So in the following slides, I will come to this point. Let's just give me one minute for representing DLR. DLR is one of Germany's largest research organizations, mainly in the field of aviation and space research. We are more than 10,000 researchers, uh, most of them in these fields. Uh, I'm from a small branch. I'm from the energy branch. and We have a different institutes for solar research, for wind energy research, for storage systems, for fuel cells, for combustion technology, any kind. And I'm personally representing a cross-cutting department institute, which uh, uh, is handling about energy systems analysis. So we're looking at national systems uh, and uh, are developing roadmaps and strategies for today and especially for the future. Uh, on the next side, you can see some of uh, our technology projects. So we have developed a small aircraft, which is powered by purely by hydrogen. This is a four-seater. Uh, it's able to fly around my area, my city of Stuttgart. Um, there has been a lot of uh, projects together with also with colleagues from the NASA, from the US, in measuring the impact of alternative fuels. Now you can see uh, some planes flying behind and measuring on air the 
emissions uh, of different fuels, of conventional fossil fuels, but also of new alternative innovative fuels. And we have been involved, uh, and I've been conducting leading the project Refuels Poco R, uh, which was very successful in the last five years together with a lot of Brazilian partners. And I'm really glad to see some of you today also here. Uh, it's a pleasure to see Amanda again. It's a pleasure to see Fabiola again and uh, a lot of other people I'm not able to mention. Uh, it was such a fruitful uh, and productive cooperation. So coming back to aviation, um, and we see that aviation only has a small share in um, the global CO2 emissions, uh, but uh, the result in the atmosphere is much more higher. So we calculate a factor of two to three uh, more than the CO2 which we produce down on Earth. So it has an essential share. and. The other thing is, besides uh, the COVID crisis, corona pandemic, the demand for global flight is, is rising again, and it will even double in the next years, in the next 10 years, uh, especially not so much in Europe, but especially in, in other countries like China, Asia, Middle East, uh, and of course, also in Latin America. Uh, when we look at the old IATA roadmap, uh, we can see the rising demand and the rising CO2 emissions. And this would happen if we had no action. So there are different opportunities, different uh, possibilities to limit CO2 emissions, of course, with technologies, with operation, with infrastructure. Uh, the first thing we already do is improvement of fuel efficiency. So every year, every airplane uh, gets more efficient. Uh, this helps, uh, but we need to have a carbon neutral growth starting right now. So to limit CO2 emissions from aviation. And then very soon we have to reduce emissions even by 50% to achieve the goals also of the Paris Agreement. And this is a big challenge. Um, and for this big challenge, uh, there are different measures, but uh, the most important measures uh, really radical new technologies and, of course, alternative fuels. So it's it's a must to go into sustainable kerosene and maybe also in hydrogen to reduce emissions according to the Paris Agreement. There are a lot of activities all over the world, international activities by ECO. Uh, they have started even several years ago. There are a lot of European uh, programs like the European Green Deal, European Hydrogen Strategy, the Refuel EU Aviation Program, uh, several action plans on a national level. And of course, even uh, a lot of plans already started in 2013. So uh, 10 years ago, Brazil was very active in, uh, in action plans to reduce CO2 emissions in aviation and also that is why I'm very happy to have Amanda here with us, the Abicu AV, uh, the Brazilian network for bio kerosene and alternative fuels is, is very active, has had uh, several very good conferences in Recife and, and, and in Natal. Uh, and this was a, a very important step uh, towards uh, reducing CO2 emissions in Brazil. So what kind of technologies uh, are possible in generation to produce uh, what we call the fischer tropsch route? Uh, so uh, the general aim is to use CO2 from the air by CO2 capture uh, to feed in water and electricity. Uh, the electricity goes into electrolysis, separating hydrogen and oxygen. Then they use uh, the hydrogen in a so-called fischer tropsch synthesis, producing hydrocarbons, uh, and these hydrocarbons uh, are upgraded in a refinery process into more or less conventional fuel, kerosene, diesel, uh, or, 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 or other fuels to be used in all kinds of transportation, but uh, of course, mainly in aviation, because aviation doesn't have big alternatives. So in uh, uh, in cars, you can use electricity and batteries. This is a good solution, but not for planes. You only have two options. The one is uh, synthetic fuels or the other one is hydrogen. 
But for hydrogen, you have to change everything in the plane. So even the design of the plane will be completely different. Uh, when you look at water demand, which also might be a, uh, an issue, you see that power to liquid or using wind and solar energy has the lowest demand for water compared to other technologies. And when you look at uh, also at uh, the uh, land use of different technology, you can see that power to liquid using wind and photovoltaic has the highest outcome per square kilometer or per hectare. So we can harvest much more energy per square kilometer than in all these other technologies. And that's why uh, power to liquid using uh, thin fuels, using fissure torch is a powerful solution for the future. So the question is why Brazil? Why uh, are we uh, so intensively working uh, together with Brazil besides the very nice and excellent people we, we've met? Uh, because it's a huge aviation market, Brazil is already a champion in biofuels. They have, uh, you have already had these uh, bioethanol program, also the biodiesel program, uh, which started decades ag ago. So they have an essential share. Uh, kerosene demand is rising. And not to forget Embraer, which is the third or fourth largest civil air manufacturer. And so you have an essential industry for uh, aviation besides the two other champions uh, like Airbus and Boeing. Uh, and also uh, that uh, aviation fuel is quite expensive in Brazil compared to the Avril, uh, to the global average. And you have a lot of remote airports somewhere outside uh, in the Amazonia, which uh, have been provided by kerosene. And there the price is even much more higher than the world market prices. So Brazil is an excellent uh, location. We have made uh, several studies and some results I can present today. So these are maps. Uh, you can see the resolution is very fine. It's uh, about 50 square kilometers. So we have analyzed all over Brazil uh, to generate the potential of sustainable aviation fuels and also the costs. Uh, and we have defined different strategies. So self-sufficient mean that you are really producing remotely in a remote area with no essential grid connection. And the net zero is that you can use also the grid uh, available to take in, uh, to take out electricity and put in electricity again. So the net zero is the yearly balance is zero but you can use uh, the electricity grid as some kind of storage. Uh, and this gives you an, uh, an, an overview of how powerful photovoltaic and wind together might be. Of course, wind has a lot of potentials in the northeastern part of Brazil, but solar is available all over Brazil. Uh, we also investigated wind offshore, which is also very nice and very powerful in the northeastern part of Brazil. But in most of the coast, it's it's very, uh, very interesting. So these are only some of the results we have uh, we have produced in the last five years. We also took uh, a look at specific sites for production, very remote one like Sao Gabriel do Cachoeira. Uh, we also took a look at Fortaleza, Natal, where we have excellent conditions in solar and wind, and also uh, taking into consideration first to Iguazu, where there is a powerful hydropower plant. Uh, and this also get, get some impacts on the costs of the production of synthetic fuels. So uh, I will come to, to the conclusions of this work. Um, there's a huge potential in Brazil, of course, because Brazil is such a huge country uh, with available areas. Uh, typically, the costs uh, may have a range from 1 euro 50 to 4 euros in 2050. Uh, of course, it will not be as cheap as today. So the price uh, has to rise because the costs will be higher. Uh, but uh, we think that this could be a powerful solution. Uh, and even in the decentralized uh, applications, uh, also prices between two and three euros will be possible. Electricity costs or so renewable energy is 
the most relevant share on the production. Uh, we have also took a look at, uh, at Brazil's energy system to integrate is together with biofuels. So we are not in the competition with biofuels. It's an additional uh, possibility to create, to produce sustainable aviation fuels. Uh, and we've also conducted several case studies on this field together with Brazilian partners. So in the end, um, the mission we have uh, created in the refuels or in Brazil, we call it the ProQR project was that we have a change of paradigm. So we started uh, 700 years ago in, in Europe, in, uh, in the UK and Germany with the use of coal then we have used a lot of uh, oil starting 100 years ago. So gas came later on. And this is representing uh, the old world, the old fossil world with the colors of Germany. Uh, it's a German flag colors. Uh, and today we have two more colors, the green one and the blue one, which uh, represent also the Brazilian colors um, and also indicate that the age of renewables has already begun, especially in Brazil, decades ago, you have been using huge capacities of hydropower and also biomass. Uh, but now we can put them together in an integrated mix of renewables and also produce uh, much more fuel also for aviation. So the main findings, what I started in the beginning is that climate change is a global challenge. We have to find global solutions uh, and the Paris Agreement of 2050 has made an excellent start. Now we have to really to work on the massive reduction of greenhouse gases. Uh, aviation is a crossroads, so we have to reduce CO2 emissions uh, besides biofuel. These synthetic fuels have huge potentials and we also might use the option of drop in uh, into other fuels. And the international cooperation we have experienced with Brazil is a very powerful, uh, powerful reference. And I would call it a lighthouse uh, to bring these technologies and these solutions to Brazil, to Germany, to Europe and the world. So uh, this is one of my final slides presenting the team of the project together with GSZ, together with Eduardo Sordiano from MCTI and a lot of other people uh, who have been participating from DLR and from the Brazilian partners. Uh, and I would like to end my uh, presentation with these, with these final pictures of the two aircrafts uh, and like to say thank you, obrigado. Thank you, thank you, Jürgen. It's a, it's a pleasure uh, really to see all the details and all the information that's uh, so, so valuable for us and to have a very, very broad scenario of our, of our uh, let's say, situation on, on the SAF. So uh, I think that we are going to have a panel uh, discussion uh, later. At this point, I would like to, to invite some of, uh, of the panelists that uh, are present here and so that uh, they can provide us a, a short speech. And, and, and then once we have all the speeches from the panelists, we are going to have the discussion uh, and the Q&A uh, session uh, afterwards, okay? So I would like to check, um, uh, Zita, uh, just checking, uh, is uh, Dr. Carlos Hilario already with us? Yes, yes, he's here. That's yep. great, that's great. So I would like to bring uh, to the table uh, engineer Carlos Hilario da Silva, head of zero emission Embraer Brazil. It's a great honor to have you with us today and even representing Embraer, which is one of the most important and relevant uh, producers of the world. And it started in a very, very, let's say, romantic way here in Brazil when the Instituto Tecnológico de Aeronáutica was uh, created. And then after that, we, we started building the conditions uh, that are natural for a big country like Brazil. On, on developing the aerospatial industry. And Embraer is a, it's an honor for Brazil and, and, and for the world to have uh, our flights and our, our, our jets uh, all around the world. But, and it's even better to have Embraer invi in included and 
uh, participating in such an important matter for us, which is the sustainability of this, this, this project. So please, Mr. Carlos Hilarius, uh, uh, you are more than, than welcome to assume the table at this point. Well, thanks very much, Marco. Uh, thanks for the, the nice words about Embraer. It's all, uh, my pleasure to be here today. I apologize, my camera is not working proper, properly today, but uh, I'm tr I'll try to, can you, can you hear me well? Yeah. Yes, yes, we can yes. hear you well, Carlos. Perfect. So let me share very quickly some, uh, some slides that will help us to go through. I know I have only five minutes, so I'll try to be uh, on time. We Let can me see, know when you- We can, yeah? see, we can okay. see our slides, yeah, it's perfect here. Okay, thank you. So again, um, my pleasure to be here today and talk a little bit about what we've been doing regarding sustainable aviation. Uh, so I want to start uh, just giving uh, a, a general overview. And we just saw on the, uh, the keynote speaker before regarding our commitment for net zero carbon in 2050, right? So uh, sustainability is something imperative on our world. And we have a very, uh, um, challenge goal to achieve uh, the net zero by 2050. And the, and the way for us to achieve this is a combination of different factors, okay? So we really need to go and look for disruptive technologies uh, in order to be able to uh, achieve the target. And at Embraer, we have different activities. I usually like to say that uh, there is no silver bullet for us to achieve the net zero uh, in aviation. So they, there will between uh, hydrogen uh, uh, utilization and it hydrogen, it could be uh, using fuel cells or it could be uh, burning hydrogen on the on a gas turbine. We also have uh, electric electric propulsion. So as you can see here, this is a, a nice picture of our first 100% uh, electric flight demonstrator, where we we gain a lot of knowledge and capability on full electric aircraft. We've been working with sustainable aviation fuel for a long time. So this is something that we've been, uh, we started even with uh, the Ipanema of the full uh, ethanol uh, aircraft. And we've been evolving with uh, SAF for a long time. And we are also looking for the total life cycle of these technologies, right? So we are looking for recycling. We are looking for noise reduction. So there are different activities on our portfolio that are ongoing at the moment. And we believe the combination of technology, economics, infrastructure and supply, policy and regulation, and five and, and finally public acceptance. So we have to work in these five different uh, streams in order to be able to unlock the net zero aviation. And I like the, uh, the saying regarding uh, zero emission is a global activity, right? And we need to have partnerships. And we do believe that in order to us to achieve a zero emission aircraft, we need to have a technology symbiosis where we bring ultra efficient propulsion, ultra efficient airframes and ultra efficient vehicle systems integration so that we can definitely have a zero emission uh, aircraft. What we are doing on our research and technology strategy. So as I said, we are looking for electrification. It's not only electrification on the propulsion system, but also bringing electrification for the rest of the aircraft, which we call more electric aircraft. We are also looking for hydrogen and SAF. And we have five technology trusts one that deals mainly with airframe propulsion integration. Then we have propulsion systems architectures, vehicle systems integration, energy source and management, and life cycle management. So those are the, the main activities that are ongoing. And this is my final slide to be able to stay with my five minutes. Uh, we do believe that uh, partnership is key. And this is the only way that we are gonna progress on aviation. Embraer has a very successful history of having key partnerships in the past, and we, we want to uh, uh, enhance this partnership. So I want to finalize here, leaving the door open for you, everyone that is on the audience to 
join us on this journey for the zero emission aviation in the future. So thanks very much for your time and more than welcome to, 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 to have questions afterwards. Thank great, you, Carlos. No, thank you very much. It was great presentation. It was very good to set the stage, uh, including uh, from the perspective of Embraer. It's, it's uh, just great. And we are going to come back to you in our panel discussion in, a, in, a, in some minutes. So I would like to, to invite now Amanda Duarte Gondin and Livia Nunes Cavalcanti uh, so that uh, they can introduce themselves and, and, and present their, their brief, let's say, uh, speech so that we can uh, hear from their perspective too. Wait a minute. Please, please wait. We already can see your, your screen, Amanda. Yeah. I'm, sh I'm sharing my screen, so. Amanda. Yes, yes, Livia, it's your screen. Yes. We, we can yes. see it already. Yeah, if you can just put in a, in a presentation mode so that we can have it uh, the full screen. Okay. Is it okay now? Not yet, but uh, but we can go ahead, no problem. It's, uh, I think it's-, it's, it's oh, just, just a second. It's not, maybe, maybe, uh, it, yes, there or the, the left side, on, on the, the one that's designed of, like a book. That's yeah, but, like but I know what is happening, so just, just let me do something. I'm going to share it again, probably, you have to Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes, that's perfect. Yes. I think it's okay now, right? <laughs> Yes, that's okay, Livia. Uh, good morning. I I would like the thing to thank you then about the invitation, the participation, the innovation talk. Uh, my name is Amanda Gondi. I'm professor of Federal University of the Rio Grande do North in Brazil. I research my focus line in catalytic process and to produce sustainable liquid fuels. I also serve as a coordination of the Brazilian network uh, for biokerosene, you call it RDKV. This project this project allows me to contribute to, uh, so, so, contribute to the development of in, in Brazil. Uh, I speak of the, the BKV. This starting is it's working in 2017. Uh, in the they produce stuff in Brazil. Also, the BKV seeks uh, to drive in research, in technology development in political uh, politi work in Brazil. Um, in Brazil, SAP uh, has no SAP production yet. Uh, it has a perspective starting in 2025. Uh, but uh, we have always had two Congress in 2029, in the other in 2022. But uh, with the participation program project, you can they participate in the, the Congress. The next Congress will be November 6 to 8 uh, of this, this year. Uh, and you are uh, our invited. Uh, so it's Campinas in Brazil, but uh, and I, I'm thinking about the, 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 the city. Uh, I conclude my speaking. I invited the professor Lydia uh, to present the research that, uh, that uh, uh, has been con uh, conducted in your institute. Lydia, <laughs> do you introduce? Okay, so thank you, Amanda. Uh, I'm Lydia. I'm also a professor here in UFRN. Um, I work with Dr. Amanda 
for the past, like say, let's say three years, but our group has a more large um, knowledge in the South field uh, with Dr. Amanda conducting research for over, past, over the past 10 years in this area. So our group is mainly focused on developing new catalyst methods for the deoxygenation of vegetable oils in order to produce these hydrocarbons that can be utilized as a SAF um, fuel. Uh, we have developing um, new methods to produce these reactions. And uh, the main traditional methods that are available already in the industry, it relies on the use of hydrogen gas, right? Like the high pressures of uh, hydrogen. Uh, to promote this decarboxylation via three different um, ways, let's say, right? Like the decarboxylation, the, the decarbonylation, decarboxylation, and the hydrodeoxygenation. Um, our group has have developed uh, lots of studies uh, with new catalysts to promote this um, pyrolysis and to produce new hydro, um, produce hydrocarbons from vegetable oils. And in this first project that I, I show you here, we tried two different catalysts in the reaction of the catalytic py pyrolysis of uh, vegetable oil, the sunflower, sunflower oil. Um, and we were able to see that, um, that when we apply those catalysts, we have a little change in the uh, product formation, right? Like we are able to achieve this transformation of producing hydrocarbons in a more moderate temperature, still high, but a little, um, little lower temperature than the traditional ones. And we are also able to see that the application of those catalysts um, increases the amount of hydrocarbon produced and reduces the amount of oxygenated produce produced in the process. Um, we are also interested in doing some kinetic studies for these transformations, the, these catalytic pyro, pyro, sorry, <laughs> catalytic pyrolysis transformations, uh, where we can try to see uh, the different temperatures that the catalyst um, act and if the deoxygenation is uh, efficient by using FTIR. Um, infrared uh, spectra to um, follow the reaction. Uh, all, those, all those methods are still relies on the use of hydrogen, right? Like high pressure of hydrogen. So we are also interested on in new methods to produce um, this decarboxylation process without using hydrogen. Uh, so we developed, recently we developed the nickel catalyzed reduction of uh, fatty acids to drop in biofuels. So we have to um, convert the fatty acids into the ester, what we call an active ester. And then we use um, commercially available nickel catalyst and the commercially available to hydrogen source. And then we can have uh, selective only the hydrocarbons uh, in the process, right? So we selective convert fatty acids obtained from uh, vegetable oils um, directly from the hydrolysis of vegetable oils, and then we can convert them into the hydrocarbons. Um, we don't, these reactions are, are done in the bench, like without using any hydrogen gas, any pressure, any temperature. As you can see here, it's 40 degrees, and it happens kind of, uh, very selective, in a very selective manner. Uh, another um, method that we are also Interesting is the electro decarboxylation, where we apply electrochemistry to promote also um, the formation of hydrocarbons from vegetable oils. So we use the vegetable oils, we hydrolyze them into the fatty acids, and then we apply uh, electrochemistry to produce um, our desired products, right? Like that can be applied as dropping biofuels. Um, we are able to obtain mainly uh, alkenes, but we also have the inconvenience so far, the method is still in developing, um, but so far we obtain um, mainly ethers as the side products for these reactions. But as we can see here, 
the reaction also worked without any hydrogen, any um, fancy equipment. Uh, we only use the electro um, a cell, uh, electro cell, and then we have the the fully conversion of um, a mixture of fatty acids into hydrocarbons. Our last project involved the photocatalysis for this process. And this is a, a very good process because it happens without any, I mean, mainly without anything. We use a photocatalyst, an organic photocatalyst catalyst that can be recovered in the end of the process. And we have a highly, highly selective reaction with a highly, with, with a very high yield for the production of uh, hydrocarbons from fatty acids uh, obtained from the hydrolysis of uh, vegetable oils. Um, the system requires nothing, basically. So we only need um, a flask and some light and uh, the photocatalyst and the, and the fatty acid. There is no hydrogen source needed as the hydrogen that comes in the end in the process comes from directly from the fatty acid. So we don't have to use any hydrogen source in this, in this process. Uh, and we obtain, as we can see here in this slide, very selective um, hydrocarbons alkanes. Um, so this is oh, uh, another project that we are developing in, um, in collaboration with Professor Martinez that is not here today, but it's a great collaborator of, of our group, uh, is the production of green hydrogen for application on this sustainable aviation fuels process. So as we said before, right, like one of, one of the main problems is that we need hydrogen to promote this process and why not to use green hydrogen and avoid the use of hydrogen obtained from fossil fuel fuels. Um, so, I guess that's it. I, I guess I made it in. Uh, I would like to thank all the, the partnerships that we have to say that we cannot do anything alone, right? Like this is our group. This is the people that actually do, do the work, right? <laughs> and thank you all for, for your attention. Oh, th thank you, Livia. Thank you, Amanda. And, and obviously it's a great work and great team. We can only achieve uh, such success and such positive perspectives with a dedicated, committed team. And congratulations for that too. So uh, we are going to the last uh, uh, panelist here, which is uh, Fabiola Correa and Daniel uh, from, S S S from Senai Renewable Energy Institute in Brazil. So we would like to, to invite Fabiola and Daniel for the, their speech. And afterwards, we are going to have the, the panel discussion. So please uh, share your screen if, you're, if you have slides, uh, Daniel and, and uh, Fabiola. Thank you very much for coming. Hello, good morning. My name is Fabiola Carvalho. And we are um, here. I'm Daniel. I'm, we're both researchers here at the Senai Institute of Innovation in Renewable Energies. Um, I'm trying to share my screen, but I can't find. It's it's the green button in the middle of your lower part of the the screen. It's a say share screen, the green one in the in the oh should be in mine is is in the middle in the bottom side. It could be in the upper side. Yeah, that's it. Now you're sharing the whole thing. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay. And if you just put in in, in uh, presentation mode, perfect, Daniel. Well, um, me and Fabiola, we're both researchers at the Senai Institute of Innovation in Renewable Energies. It's an institute that's situated in Natal, Rio Grande do Norte, in Brazil. We, we're part of a, a group of 60 researchers today in the institute, uh, a really fast growing growing institute. We have more than 20,000 meters squares of built area. And we are part of a network of other 27 institutes, each one with its own line of expertise for research. And 
the reason why we we work with renewable energies is because of the area we were in that has a, a huge potential for the production of, of renewable energies and today we're mainly focused on the development of, of sustainable fuels we uh, we're directioning our, our research to aviation fuels mainly because of the challenges that we we face today uh, <clears throat> today we know that as was mentioned by Jürgen, the, the aviation sector, it, it contributes with around 2% of the whole carbon dioxide emissions. And due to technological barriers, it, it's very hard to, to use other kinds of fuels. So one of the, the, the short-term solutions that are, are possible is to use synthetic fuels and the aviation sector is is one of the, the biggest in, interested sectors uh, mainly due to to Corsia that is the carbon offsetting and reduction scheme for international aviation that in the future uh, from 2027 uh, to 2035 will obligate all the, the governments and, that, and the airlines to take some measures to, to reduce the carbon emissions in the aviation sector. So uh, these are some of our projects uh, that we're developing together with uh, our partners. This project is being developed together with GIZ and the, the Federal University of Grande Norte, together with Professor Amanda. Uh, and it aims to use glycerin, from, uh, which is a co-product from biodiesel. Uh, we use it to produce the synthetic fuels but it goes through through some processes uh, we we do this in a in a pilot scale already and as we we use the glycerin in a process called chemical looping that is basically using a solid oxygen transporter in a, a series of oxidation and re reduction reactions that works in cycles. And this process, it, it mainly produces uh, carbon monoxide, which is together with uh, the hydrogen, it forms what we call the syngas for the fischer tropsch process. The fischer tropsch process is the heart of our whole process. It produces uh, it transforms the carbon monoxide and the hydrogen into uh, hydrocarbon chains in a mixture that we call it the syncrude. And this syncrude is, is, is like a synthetic pet petroleum. And this syncrude, uh, it goes through an upgrading process, which is uh, a family of processes that adequate uh, these molecules into uh, to the fuel, the sustainable fuel, to to make the the hydro the mixture properties adequate to be used in in the planes. Another project that we're developing now is in partnership also with the Federal University of Rio Grande do Norte and with GALP from Portugal. And this project it aims uh, 
to produce the true e fuels so we we have the production of hydrogen through electrolysis using renewable energy it can be both uh, solar or or wind power and the carbon dioxide is captured directly from the air and the, these these two chemicals they we we send them to a reactor which we call the reverse water gas shift reactor and this reactor it has the aim to transform the carbon dioxide into carbon monoxide which again when mixed with the the hydrogen produced from the electrolysis it it forms the syngas for the fisher troughs process again the heart of our process is the fisher troughs and again we have a, a, an upgrading process the advantage of this process is that uh, the fisher troughs it will produce hydrocarbons that are clean in sulfur clean in nitrogen and and with very little amount of oxygenates like alcohols and ethers esters and and so on so the upgrading process is a lot simpler than than the than the same processes for for petroleum or for other other sustainable fuel processes so uh, this is our team uh, the team that that helps develop these projects we're eight people uh, today and we work from from the the design of the process to the project and also the operation and well this is what uh, what we we brought to to show you today thank you for for your attention and any any inquiries you you can address me or fabiola directly by email or even whatsapp <laughs> okay well thank you very much uh, for you daniel and fabiola uh, and all the the, the panelists we appreciate uh, your participation and would like to move ahead to our uh, panel discussion. Uh, this is going to be uh, an open discussion. And obviously, I would uh, suggest that the, the panelists would uh, interact and, and, and even uh, we could open for uh, um, even questions from the, the audience. Uh, if you feel like uh, doing it, I would uh, suggest that we receive the the questions in a chat so i can i can go ahead and and provide let's say the 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 conduct the questions to the to the panelists but before of all i would like to hear and i would like to start with a with a question here to to dr jürgen uh, kern uh, if uh, and my question would be after uh, what what he have just seen on the Embraer perspective, and also about the projects that we are developing here. Uh, if you see anything uh, similar or how you compare, let's say, those visions from a global perspective. So we are, we are working here in Brazil uh, to develop options, to develop projects, to, to, let's say, to achieve the requirements or the expected results on, on, on uh, sustainable aviation fuels. But from your perspective, how do you see the level of uh, the stage of development that we have in Brazil compared to the other things that you've been seeing around the world? Thank you, Marco, for this question, which is very important. Um, I, I try to answer from a point of view of a researcher from the DLR. Uh, I'm involved in uh, several projects uh, concerning global aviation and sustainable fuels. And I can see uh, a bunch of activities all over the world. Um, and Brazil, especially with Embraer, Air, is uh, at least on the same level as we are in Germany uh, or in other countries like, like the US. But a big difference is in Brazil 
you already have uh, a green power, a green fuel economy. There is no green fuel economy all over the world. Uh, you are driving your cars, you're driving your, your trucks uh, with green uh, solutions. And this is uh, what we do not see yet in Germany or other countries, of course, not in aviation. There are a lot of prototypes uh, which are very powerful, but not economic solutions. And I think this also comes to the question which Sibel is uh, giving in the chat uh, concerning the gap. So actually, there is no world market uh, for sustainable aviation fuels, for green sustainable aviation fuels. We have some producers, most of them are prototypes, small amounts, and we have some applications. Uh, but most of the applications are also prototypes. Not, it's not a mass production and sustainable aviation fuel is not yet become what we call a commodity. So it's not, uh, it's not traded globally. You can buy from Brazil, from Australia, from Chile, and you have a global market price and a global consumer. There, yet there is no market, uh, a global market for this. And I think uh, we can learn a lot from Brazil because you initiated a market for bioethanol, you initiated a market for biodiesel. Uh, and, and this, this is very helpful to, to learn from you how to, how to start a market for this and also how maybe start a market for sustainable aviation fuels in Brazil, but also on a global, on a global level. Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, Jürgen. And I would like uh, maybe to hear from Carlos uh, from, from, from Embraer if, uh, if you see, uh, let's say, that we are in a good shape, we are in a good uh, perspective, let's say, on, on advancing on, on those developments. And, and I would like to ask, and I'm sorry if this is not a very technical question, but I, I would like to make a parallel uh, between what we are hearing everywhere on the automotive industry and 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 the aviation industry we we see a lot of discussion uh, between let's say what's the biofuels against hydrogen or or electrical how do you see those uh, discussions are there are they comparable when you look at uh, the productions of uh, the production of 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 uh, uh, jets is this does this make sense that kind of difficult different options on the, the on the on a solution for a more sustainable uh, fuels for the world yeah marco thanks for the question they address the the, fir the first question regarding uh, how we are right and uh, i do believe that uh, brazil is in a sweet spot for changing the the sustainable aviation right so um, we have everything that is needed, uh, feedstock, we have uh, uh, a, a grid power. Uh, uh, so, I mean, uh, I, I, I always like to say that we are really very fortunate to be in a sweet spot to change uh, sustainability of transportation today. Uh, however, uh, when it comes to SAF, for instance, right, Sustainable Aviation Fuel, and our colleague from uh, University of uh, Rio Grande do Norte. She said that we don't have production of SAF in Brazil yet. And uh, we need to definitely have better policies. We need to have incentives and we have to, to help uh, the supply chain uh, in Brazil for us to, to really uh, start producing and scale the production of SAF in Brazil. And uh, the main limitation with SAF today it is uh, the lack of available uh, in a global scale and the cost, right? So when you compare still the cost of SAF with a conventional jet A fuel, uh, there's three uh, up to five times the cost, right, to, to use it. So we need definitely to increase the production, increase the, uh, the, uh, the global scale uh, and uh, reduce the cost. So this is number one. And uh, regarding the second question, I think that there are some similarities, okay, regarding the, uh, the car industry. And uh, as I said in my speech, there's no silver bullet for, for aviation. So there will be 
opportunities for full electric aircraft, okay? As we have full electric cars. So if we see, for instance, the this uh, urban air mobility movement, right? With the EVTOLs, the electric vertical and takeoff and landing. I think we are in a, in, a, in, a, in a current situation on the battery technology that allows the entry into service of these uh, uh, vehicles, you know? So it's uh, not a long, long distance, a small number of passengers and uh, uh, a smaller velocity. So I think that there is place, and also for fixed wing aircraft, right? So if we think for a small aircraft, nine seats or six seats or flight trainer, okay? So we have a, a lack of pilots in the, in the world, right? So if we can provide an airplane that has a lower operational cost and then decreasing the price to training pilots uh, by electric, that, that would be very, very important for, for the market and for sustainability as well. But the technology is not there yet on the battery for bigger aircraft. So we need to, to look for uh, hydrogen, for instance. Uh, but then we come up with the problem, right? We need to, if we move to hydrogen, it has to be green hydrogen. There is no other way for us to use the other colors of hydrogen. So we need to target for green hydrogen. And then uh, uh, what is the cost uh, to provide this in, uh, uh, in the place that we need? So in other airports, uh, in a global scale. So there's no way, for example, to uh, an aircraft manufacturer to design an aircraft and put the business plan to operate only in Brazil, for instance, right? So these aircraft need to operate globally. So, uh, so this is something that uh, it is still required for hydrogen. So we need to uh, have uh, uh, better costs and we need to look for green hydrogen. And again, Brazil is in a sweet spot for that. So if we can help to, to, to modify this, this as a, alternative fuel, I think it will be it will be very good. And again, I mean, there is one important point that I always like to say, and it relates a little bit with the car industry as well, regarding regulations and standards, okay? So if you go on standards for cars right now, the plug that you have for charging the battery, it, it could be different if you are in, in the south part of Brazil or in the north part of Brazil, or if you go to Argentina, so this is not possible for airplane, right? You need to have standards that will be uh, applied globally. So this is something that is on discussion. So there are different task groups. There are different uh, SAE committees that are working on these standardizations and certification for this new technology to, to go into aviation. And my last comment here is that... Um, there is a reason why we uh, flying is so safe. And we learned this for a long time and we've been learning, okay? And the certification authority and also the aircraft manufacturer will not bring uh, these new technologies into a real product if we cannot have the same or even better safety uh, 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 aspects of the aviation. So we need to look on safety, cost, technology, and efficiency. So everything needs to be in a very good alignment to, to this to become a reality. I'm not sure if I covered all your question, Mark, but... Uh... No, no, I think it's great. And, and again, I, I didn't mean to be very much in depth from a technical perspective, but more your view on the trends. And I think it's, that's very clear. You, you address some of the key topics. Uh, the aviation industry is not a regional one. Or, if you do any, any, if you make any any solution that's just regional, is going to be too too limited, uh, and and probably wouldn't have scale to to be uh, let's say economical viable. Uh, so the solutions have to be global, and and uh, the, I, I understand that Brazil plays a key role in that in those uh, global possible solutions. And I also agree about the hydrogen. It's uh, it's probably. Uh, a good solution from a technical perspective, perspective, but it has to be anyway a good perspective, a good solution from the sustainability uh, perspective. So, so it has to be oh. green, as you mentioned. So, fully agree, right. and I think you address the, the the questions, Carlos. Thank you very much. I would like to know if uh, Amanda, Livia, Fabiola, or Daniel would like to add some some comments here and this discussion. 
Yes, yes, ok. Quer falar? Pode falar. Não. Pode. We, can, we can both speak, no problem. Ah, <laughs> uh, It's just, just a comment. Uh, I think Jürgen uh, brought a, a very interesting data about the, the price of SAF in 2050. It will be around uh, two euros. So, so we, we hope that the technological barriers we're facing today, we will, we will overcome this in time. So, so that the price of, of this fuel, uh, it, it, it becomes closer to what's practiced today with, with the, the fossil fuels, right? I don't think I uh, don't know if I, I if you can um, if <laughs> so if you could could understand uh, what, what I said. It's just a, just a comment. <laughs> go, go ahead, Jurgen, please. You you are on mute. Thank you, Daniel. <laughs> Thank you, Marco. <laughs> unmuting me um, directly to Daniel. Uh, we've been talking about cost, not prices. So uh, the cost is production. How, how can we produce? And the price is what the market will pay for. So actually, the costs for fossil fuel are very low, but the price is much more higher because the oil companies have a lot of revenues and trans everything, taxes, everything comes to the final price. So. But um, it sounds very expensive from today's perspective, two euros or even more. But fossil fuels will have massive uh, taxes or CO2 taxes in the future. So they will become very expensive in the future. Uh, and therefore, we see a market for sustainable aviation fuels uh, on, on one point because we have to do besides the costs and the prices. And on the other way, because fossil fuels will become more and more expensive. Okay, yeah. Okay, okay thank challenges you. Ahead. <laughs> okay, any, any other comments? Uh, Amanda or Livia, any comments from your perspective? Uh, Jürgen, what is the, the percentage of the use of the SAF in Germany now? It's today. I can give you the exact number. Uh, it's zero. Zero. <laughs> so there Invasive, is no yeah. self. We, we have some prototypes, we have some measurements mm. campaign. So we have been flying with the new Airbus uh, 350 over France and Spain, and we've been tracking him with different times of stuff. Uh, but we have no. Actually, there is no commercial stuff, as there is no commercial green hydrogen yet. Uh, and the thing we have to do is we have to work on market conditions. And what we need right now is offtake agreements. Somebody who tells us, I will buy this amount of stuff or this amount of green hydrogen for this price in two years or five years. This actually, there is no market, and that's the reason why. There is no commercial production. Yes. Uh, in USA, uh, use the thirty percent in California today. In San Francisco, it's very, it's very. But the south is from the, the Singapore. I think especially in Brazil, you have the great opportunity to start with your activities also yeah. with stuff from biofuels and bio, uh, bio sources, which is uh, an excellent solution. But on the long term concerning looking into 2050, it will be limited also because of the available areas. So on the long term, we have to go into what we call uh, power fuels or so fuels from electricity. 
So biofuels is, is powerful, but limited. Yeah. Uh, Brazil, Brazil has a lot of biomass in the energy, and of the wind and solar. Yes, but I, I actually, think... in, in Europe, there are several programs. Uh, they are called uh, contracts for difference yeah. who want to close the gap between high production costs and low prices of uh, a, a just starting market. So this is an instrument we will use by German, by European governments to, to enable the market. We have made the experience 20, 25 years ago when we started with photovoltaic, with solar energy, also having these subsidized uh, contracts to feed in electricity. Uh, and this might be a tool to, to initiate a market, which is not yet existing. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for information, Milgram. Okay. So uh, I would like to ask if uh, uh, anyone from the panel uh, would have to to another another question or another topic to bring up. Uh, uh, Julian, Carlos, uh, Amanda, Livia, Fabiola, and Daniel. Uh, anything that we did not cover so far, or any any taking the opportunity that we are all here and and with a, such a rich, let's say, and diverse panel that could uh, see issues and opportunities from different perspectives. Do you have any any comment or additional um, question from that perspective? <laughs> okay. Once again, uh, I would like to to ask for all the the people participating in the in the in this innovation talk any additional question uh, from the audience. I opened here the 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 chat, but uh, if you have any question, please feel free to ask uh, out loud here uh, and we could uh, address with the, with the, our our key our group of panelists any questions from your side or comments uh, Sibeli, yes uh, your question was already addressed by by Jurgen before and and I appreciate a lot uh, that you you you've sent that thank you Sibeli. Uh, anyone else not for the moment. So I would like to to make some additional comments here, and and would ask, uh, let's say, the panelists uh, from from your perspective. We are uh, living obviously in in a in a in a very challenging moments in the world. We have uh, lots of uh, technological challenges, but also social challenges, also political challenges, and uh, and obviously uh, when we are looking at uh, global solutions. Uh, with that situation of, of, of uh, a lot of uh, turbulence in the world, this uh, certainly brings some uh, difficulties uh, because we we, we we tend to feel that there are barriers where that shouldn't be. On the other hand, in turbulent air uh, moments is exactly where humanity finds its way and and, 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 and and make it happen. So uh, how do you see it? How do you see it? The velocity or the speed on the solutions, on the on the viable, uh, economical and and successful, let's say, solution for the for the aviation uh, fuels uh, will come. Do you would you guess that is something that's going to happen soon, or it's going to be retarded or delayed because of the the situation of the world? Or on the other hand. Uh, with all the challenges, we will manage and make it happen very quickly. How how do you feel that the solution is coming? And this is one question. And the other co question, do you believe that uh, Brazil is going to be competitive, uh, for instance, with all the biofuels that are already produced here and could serve other areas in the world with biofuels uh, that somehow are, are going to be started here and then serve uh, areas in which uh, it's not possible to be produced. Are, is Brazil going to be competitive enough? So these two questions, the speed on the solution and is Brazil going to be competitive in the world uh, in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in the near future, let's say. So uh, 
anyone that would like to from the panel that would like to comment uh, uh most appreciated Uh, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead, Livian. Um, I believe the speed is not as faster as we wish as we wish it was, right? Like I, I think we we need the change now. We need to start having fear to change, right? Like we need to start trying this new process and trying these um, new fuels produced in a in a big scale. Um, I believe hydrogen is still. Um, some concern in the world because um, we need security first, right? Like a, an explosion of hydrogen is not something that anyone can deal as of right now. So we have to um, be prepared not, not only as a research and um, in companies, but also the population, right? Like the population needs to uh, lose the, the fear of, uh, of the new, right? Like we, we cannot have fear of uh, new fuels and new hydrogen. I think that this is something that can be addressed and we need to work hard on these things. Um, and uh, in, our, in our end, right? Like I believe we are in the sweet spot in Brazil. Like Brazil has, it, Rio Grande do Norte has all the power to solar, um, solar cells and wind cells. And we, we have everything here. We have some, Almost every year we are hot, we are <laughs> we have wind, we have everything here. So um, if we have the right collaboration first, right? Like because we cannot do anything alone. Um, we need collaboration. So because we need something global, as we are discussing here in this panel today, we need something global. We cannot rely only on Brazil, right? Like only with the things that we are developing here. Um, but we have the power to do that. We proved that with ethanol, um, and we want to explore even more um, these this new fuels that are coming. You are on mute. No. Sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Any additional comment uh, from from uh, Fabiola or Daniel or even Carlos or Jürgen? Jürgen, go ahead, please. Yeah, thank you. I think these questions are really essential because it uh, looks very slow. We don't see so much development in the market, and the market has not developed. As I'm, I'm an aeronautical engineer, and I like to compare. Uh, the start of a new technology into the market uh, with the start of a rocket. Have you ever seen a rocket being starting? In the beginning, it's so slow. You even wonder whether it will lift off or not. It's so slow and it takes a lot of energy, makes a lot of noise and, of course, a lot of money. Um, but in the end, it started and it becomes faster and faster and faster. And in the end, you will explore uh, the moon, uh, the Mars, uh, or even other other planets. So in the end, you get such a high speed and such a performance. And it, it's always the same with industry. So 130 years ago in my hometown here around, two guys started with an innovation. Uh, it was later on called the car uh, that put just some technologies together uh, and combustion engine just put on, on a horse uh, chassis uh, and now the car was innovated but in the beginning uh, there only were very few cars but 10 years later everybody wants to have a car and now we have a car industry and it's some kind it's uh, it's an epidemic a, 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 a epidemic with the cars because we have too many cars all over the streets but it takes some time in the beginning it's always slow expensive you have to pay a high prices don't uh, uh, don't be, um, don't bother yourself with high prices. In the beginning, everything is expensive. So don't care about paying 50 euros per liter for uh, sustainable aviation fuels. The amount is very small. It's only one or two or 10 or 100 liters. So it's a small amount with high prices. And as soon as the amount gets bigger and bigger, the price will reduce massively. So it will... Uh, reduce 30, 40, 50% every year. 
because of the production capacity. Uh, so uh, don't be concerned about the speed. We have already started, we've already lift off uh, and it will soon get more and more speed. And the second question about the, competi uh, the competitive of Brazil, um, I think Brazil has everything we need. Um, we don't find uh, similar preconditions uh, all around the world in another country. So of course, in Germany, we have a lot of technologies, we have a lot of science. Uh, this is good, but Brazil has the equal level. Your uh, aviation industry with Embraer is excellent. Uh, I've visited a lot of universities all over Brazil. It's excellent. Uh, uh, and even uh, the political background in Brazil with your ministry and the programs they've done in the last years with bioethanol and biodiesel is excellent. And uh, besides Germany, uh, you have resources. We don't have so many resources. You have already a hydropower grid, which is stable. You have so many resources for wind energy on and offshore. And of course, huge areas for solar energy. So everything is available in Brazil and we're just starting and we're just improving. And that's how we do in the next years. Great, great. Good to, to have that kind of... Uh let's say, down-to-earth perspective, because sometimes we tend to be a little bit excited and then frustrated because things doesn't happen. But uh, we have to take, uh, to start uh, solid, but not very fast, and possibly we reach the, the solutions in any in any kind of uh, research. Uh, I think that's that has to be the, the mindset. Thank you very much, Jürgen. Okay, I do not see any, any other uh, question in our chat. And actually, I, I think I, I've covered the ones that I would like to, to cover with you. Uh, so I would like to ask you, uh, all the panelists, uh, and again, uh, Jürgen, Carlos, Amanda, uh, Livia, Fabiola, and Daniel, uh, if you want to say your last uh, final, let's say, for this uh, meeting uh, words, so that we, we can close it. But uh, if, you, if you have anything, any else to, anything else to comment, please go ahead. I would ask uh, Jürgen to start with his closing uh, remarks. Thank you very much, Marco. Um, I will only give a short statement. We have had a, such good start in cooperation and cooperation is the key. Uh, we have technologies all over the world, uh, but we have to work together and the cooperation with Brazilian people, Brazilian institutions, Brazilian ministry was always excellent and pro productive and let's continue in the way uh, I'm happy to to work together with you uh, for 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 the not only for Brazil but also for Germany but also for the world it's our world it's the only one we have that's that's great great comment thank you very much that, that's very inspiring Carlos, uh, now I can see you. It's great that you have uh, solved the issue with the camera, but please go ahead with your final remarks. Yeah, apologies. I had uh, a computer issue I needed to reboot here. So, but uh, I mean, I just want to, again, uh, thank you for the opportunity for, for us to present what we are doing uh, at Embraer regarding sustainable uh, aviation. I think we have a big challenge ahead of us. And as we all presented here, but uh, with big challenges, there are many opportunities as well, right? And uh, I think that uh, we have a great team together. There is a long history collaboration between Brazil and Germany. Uh, we have different projects with DLR as well uh, in different aspects. And uh, I do think that uh, uh, as a Brazilian as well, we need to take advantage of our uh, privilege uh, position. And... Uh, Embraer is, is always open to work with uh, Professor Livia, Professor Sibeli, with Senai and other universities as well. Uh, and uh, I mean, we will only see the change in the future if we start now. We all know that uh, things, uh, it is not for today or tomorrow, but if we wait, we will never see the change. So we need to be together now, working together now so that we can change the future uh, together. Okay, so thanks very much again, and uh, more than help to see the next steps from this this chat. Great, thank you very much, Carlos, again for your participation. Great that you are here with us.
Uh, Amanda and Livia, your final comments. Uh, um, I wait for the news of the SAF production in Brazil. <laughs> so, and Jürgen and Marcos, uh, thank you for collaboration and you uh, discussing for collaboration in the reality in German. Uh, thank you for Thank you. Thank you, Amanda. Livia, any comments? Thank you too for the invitation to uh, listen to so many uh, great panelists and, and know a little bit more about, about SAF. Um, I would like to invite everyone here in name of uh, Dr. Amanda uh, for you all to come to our meeting that we will have in November here in Brazil to talk only about uh, sustainable fuels. So please come all. It's gonna be in Campinas, it's not as great as here in the Northeast, but it's still, it's a great place to visit. <laughs> uh, Livia, when, when is going to be in Campinas? When? No, um, November 6th to 8th. 6th to 8th of November in yes. Campinas. That's yes. great. That's great news. We would like uh, to invite you all to come, please. I consider myself invited. <laughs> And uh, Fabiola and Daniel, uh, if you want to, and, and I'll, I'll ask, I'll open even for if you have any comments in Portuguese too, because I remember uh, always when we when we see the volleyball teams and the, the Formula One drivers, used to have Brazilians, sometimes uh, all, all the, the, the interviews uh, opened for a last comment in Portuguese. So uh, if you have anything uh, in English or in Portuguese, Fabiola and Daniel, please feel free. And all the others, uh, also, please feel free to, to comment. Obrigada, Mar. <laughs> Primeiro, eu queria agradecer o convite para esse evento tão bacana de relevância, falar sobre SAF é sempre bacana, é sempre importante, e a gente precisa demais estar discutindo sobre tecnologias e estar é, tornando esse conhecimento mais acessível para todos. Então, o IZR é, agradece em meu nome, pelo convite, né? E estamos abertos aqui para receber vocês, a indústria, os centros de pesquisa. Se quiserem nos visitar, fiquem à vontade. Nós também estamos abertos para parcerias é, na área de SAF e, e também de outros combustíveis avançados. Então, fiquem à vontade. A gente já tá, já deixou nosso contato aí na apresentação. Temos aí o nosso WhatsApp, nosso e-mail. Se quiserem entrar em contato, estamos aqui disponíveis. É, para falar sobre SAF, para trabalhar com SAF, para trazer esse produto de forma comercial. Né? Hoje você trabalha em escala piloto e a gente tem um desafio aí de tornar esse combustível realmente comercial, um desafio urgente, inclusive, e a gente está aberto para isso. É, Daniel, vocês estão em Natal tá mesmo, né? Oi, em Natal, nós estamos em Natal aqui no Rio Grande do Norte. A gente tem um potencial enorme aqui no Rio Grande do Norte na área de energias renováveis. O Hugo mostrou, inclusive, aí que a gente, um estudo locacional mostra o nosso potencial nisso. Aqui no Instituto a gente também faz estudos locacionais e aqui a gente chama de Alicossaf. O Hugo trouxe lá o Cabo Carolina, mas a gente faz estudos econômicos, fazemos estudos técnicos e também trabalhamos com a tecnologia de Fischetrops para a SAF e para os combustíveis avançados de uma forma geral. Então, a gente está aqui disponível e aberto para parcerias e para o que vocês precisarem. Qualquer outro. Ótimo, ótimo. Very good. Thank you very much. So, appreciate a lot. It was good to hear uh, your Portuguese uh, and, 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 and also to bring some, some additional spice for the discussion. So, I'm going to, to close if you don't have any, any other uh, uh, comments, anyone. Uh, I'm going to close by putting together some of the comments that you've just made. I think that uh, I've heard about cooperation. Jürgen mentioned about cooperation. I think that's a key. I mentioned before in the beginning of the presentation, the teamwork. We've seen the picture of the team involved in the, in the research. So collaboration and cooperation is key for the success. I think that's also I've heard from Carlos that challenges are big. But challenges are actually opportunities. So we have to face it like this and to make it happen. And last but not least, we had two invitations. One to go to Campinas in November to the, to the meeting there. And the other one to go to Rio Grande do Norte in Natal. Uh, so so that, uh, I'm going to consider both uh, invitations because both are very attractive. 
So uh, it's great and great to see that uh, the last comment uh, uh, that we've heard from, from Fabiola, that uh, SAF is a great topic, a great uh, opportunity. So let's make it happen. So great to have you all here. Great to have the, uh, the audience and all the support from the consortium of Enrich in Europe. Thank you very much, Zita, for making it possible and putting it together. Thank you very much, Sibeli, for the hard work on, on, or on, on organizing everything. And uh, especially, I would like to thank all the, the panelists, uh, Jürgen Kern, uh, Carlos Hilario, Amanda Duarte, Gondim, Livia uh, Nunes Cavalcante, Fabiola Correa, and Daniel Lira that uh, were uh, this um, present and shared with us uh, all the your knowledge and all your information. So thank you very much. We are closing uh, our innovation talk and hopefully we are going to meet you all again in the near future. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank Obrigado. You. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Thank you. Obrigado. Thank you. Um, grande abraço. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.